Welcome back, folks. Time to do some stock market work. Everybody tells me and CNBC reports and Bob Pisani, who's one of the best stock market reporters there is, uh, asks cynically, why is every week people say the Trump rally's over? Now, there may be more to it than the Trump rally, but the Trump rally has gone pretty far. I mean, it's had a nice move, 11%. In just over three months. And in fact, um, you look at this week's performance, Dow's up 355 points, NASDAQ up 104, S&P 500 up 35. On a percentage change, the numbers are even more impressive. In fact, I'm just going to say since November 8th, that was the election. Dow's up 12.5%, NAS 12.5%, S&P 10%. But get this, the smaller caps, which are really more growth sensitive, I think it's fair to say, maybe growth and credit sensitive. Anyway, the smaller cap S&P 600 up 18 percent since November 8th. The Russell uh, 2000 up 17 percent. And um, the big winners. Yep. Financials. You got it. Goldman Sachs. They're either running the government or running the stock market or both, up 22%. Banks done very well. Financials up 22%. In fact, Goldman Sachs is up 38%. Now, I harbor no great. This is good. I'm in favor of profits. I'm a free market capitalist, just saying. That's a very nice number. Bank of America up uh, 44%. And, you know, you got your heavy industry cyclicals. What do we got here? Tech up 10, industrials up 12 and a half, consumer cyclicals 10, materials 11. So it is a cyclical, I think, backed market, which is basing itself on a better economy, better profits. Some of that's probably coming from the anticipated Trump business tax cuts, which will lower tax rates and help elsewhere and Produce more profits. At least that's my read. That may not be the only read. There's always a lot going on in the world. So let's bring in two of the best of the best. We've got Jeff Kleintop coming back. Jeff, Senior VP, Chief Global Investment Strategist at Charles Schwab. That's a humongous job. Um, Jeff's, as I say, frequent contributor to CNBC. And my pal Dave Bonson from California. He's founder, managing director, chief investment officer of the Bonson Group. He's a Forbes contributor, one of Barron's Financial Times and Wall Street advisors. He's also a pretty good op-ed, op-ed piece. And I want to read. This is from the pen of David Bonson. Jeff Kleintop, have a listen to this. I don't know if you've read this or seen this, but it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's pro or con, but here. Um, The title for Mr. Bonson is Some Stock Market Advice for Our Billionaire President. Okay, I believe that refers to Donald Trump. First of all, Mr. Bonson says Trump has less than 5% of his net worth invested in stocks. So Mr. Bonson goes on to say, when Trump said a while back we are in a big, fat, ugly bubble, things are going to come crashing down. Well, they didn't come crashing down. Maybe he should have owned stocks, okay? And um, the animal spirits are better, tax reform, deregulation, repatriation of foreign profits, corporate profits. And then finally, this is the last one. This is the tough stuff. There's always a tough piece here with Mr. Bonson. When President Trump touts the performance of the market, he demonstrates a certain degree of incoherence, if not overt hypocrisy. The market was in, quote, a big, fat, ugly bubble at Dow 18,000. That was Mr. Trump's words. Well, what's that mean at Dow 20,500? Trump could argue elevated prices are justifiable before his uh, promised policies, but I don't know. He may be doing it out of convenience. And um, David Bonson suggests that there are other better metrics for Mr. Trump to use besides the stock market. So my pal Dave Bonson, I'm going to get Jeff Kleintop to react to this. Feel free to disagree as long as we are civil and respectable. David, you think, as I read this, I read this the other day, uh, Trump's focus on the stock market is probably not a good idea. 
And if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And um, by the way, he was wrong because he predicted the bubble would collapse and it hasn't. Am I I getting this about right? You want to fill in some pieces here and link this to investment strategy? Yeah, I I mean, I think you're getting it mostly right. The thing I am really trying to get to there, Larry, is that Trump is probably on dangerous ground to use the stock market in a short-term way as a kind of bellwether or benchmark for for how he's doing. I I think there's plenty of good reasons to be optimistic about certain aspects of the market. I think that there are plenty of reasons to be concerned and cautious of these valuations. But my bigger point is that what the country needs from President Trump, what he will be uh, graded by, by people like me and Jeff from a stock standpoint, and people like you, uh, uh, pundits and analysts are going to look to GDP growth. Mm. And ultimately, if we see the stock market at 25000 and we're still stuck at 2% or less GDP growth, it is not going to be uh, a good report card for President Trump. As a quick follow-up before we get uh, Professor Kleintop in, Team Obama, which was plagued by very low subpar GDP growth, real GDP growth averaged something slightly south of 2% for the duration of President Obama's terms. Now, he he came in with a bloody mess on his hands, no question. But um, even if you go back to the middle of um, the middle of 2009, it's about two, we'll call it 2%. 2% is a lousy GDP number, historically low. And Team Obama actually, I, I don't really believe that Obama believes himself in the stock market. They're always ranking out rich people. But they did rely on the stock market as a justification, David Bonson. Um, are we seeing, is this deja vu all over again? Or you just saying Trump should get off this stock market thing? It's, it's more just that it's, it's risky for him, that it's an asymmetrical risk reward, because ultimately he's not going to get a lot of credit for the mm. fact that the market is higher in the real economy. The people that are following it day by day, heavily invest in stocks, there's a lot of people in that camp that are pro-Trump anyways, pro-conservative policy, pro-tax reform. But ultimately, we, the broader message that Trump won the presidency off of is far broader economically than just stock prices. Right. That's a good point. So, uh, Jeff Kleintop, part of this, this is not the only part, but part of Mr. Bonson's controversial, uh, albeit very well written, article is that during the campaign, Donald Trump predicted a, you know, puncturing bubble meltdown. After he was won, after he won, you know, we've had this tremendous rally, uh, broad averages up 10 to 12 points and uh, smaller caps up 17 to 18 points. So was he wrong, Jeff? Do we blame him or do you take uh, David Bonson's side and say, please, Mr. President, don't hang your hat on the stock market? I think David is 100 percent right on that. This is part of, I think, taking you know, that that uh, taking him seriously, but not literally uh, type of uh, of angle. I Look, the stock market's doing very well. I talk to a lot of investors across the country. And while they're a little nervous, there's some uncertainty out there. Uh, they're they're real happy with the way the economy is going and the, and the way the market's going. And there's that uh, sense of uh, of improvement that they haven't felt in a while. The volatility index in the stock market. We're talking about levels of the Dow, but the volatility index, which is a good indicator of what markets are pricing in for future risk, if you will, is at 10 year lows. That means the stock market is saying there's nothing to worry about. And that worries me a little bit in this context, the expectations in the stock market for the president's agenda are getting pretty high. Investors' top priorities for the president right now are taxes, taxes, and taxes. He's got to focus on getting that done. If I just spend another minute on it for a second, there's a high risk of disappointment here. Look, it's hard to do tax reform. And there are lots of competing priorities and distractions with battles in the media trying to respond to every criticism and an inexperienced team. But I think the president's upcoming tax speech is going to be really important and likely to move the market. Expectations are high for a big tax cut that was signaled by the president and how detailed and ready for action it will be. I don't know. I think that the enthusiasm over a cut in the short term should be curtailed since it could be a long process, but that's balanced 
by a very positive impact on corporate earnings were to get done quickly. A drop to a 15% effective tax rate from the 30% it's at now would be absolutely huge, huge for, for corporate profits for U.S. companies. A huge winner would be the financial sector. You mentioned Goldman Sachs, but year-to-date, many financials have lagged. That could turn around or he to you know, unveil a really actionable program, but I'm afraid it could go the other way if it seems more like a broad sketch without a lot of detail. Jeff Feintop, Steve Moore and I and others are working lobbying in Washington. I want the business tax cuts early not later, early this spring. Now, my question to you on that point, if the business tax cuts come late in the year, if the rate reductions and expensing and other details are lighter than expected uh, in 2017, how much downside might there be in the stock market? Well, some of that depends on how solid, the, the overall backdrop remains. U.S. economic momentum is clearly improving as is profit growth. So that acts as a buffer. But I think there will be some disappointment. I wouldn't at all be surprised to see a 5 or 10 percent pullback in the market if this gets drawn out, if it looks like it may not happen, or it may be a very small and not the phenomenal uh, tax cut or, or the numbers that the president has talked about. Already, we've started to see um, uh, all, you know, lower effective tax rate sectors starting to outperform high effective tax rate sectors. What I mean by that is the market's beginning to get maybe a little bit skeptical on the edges of this. And I think you can see more of that if uh, if this gets dragged out. Which are the, the lower? The year. Which are the lower? We've got to take a break, but just be specific, Jeff. Which are the lower ones that are skeptical? Uh, you know, some of the sectors that uh, that have really been uh, – that are very low – uh, effective tax rate sectors are like technology. It's the best performing sector this year. Investors aren't betting that there's a turnaround there, that they're going to see cuts already. They're favoring low effective tax rate companies. What would really benefit are those that pay high effective tax rates, like the financial sector that's been lagging year to date. Mm. Well, okay. They've been pretty strong. All right, gents, we're going to come right back and pursue uh, all of this. You really, I love the way you both handled. Uh, this opening, Jeff Kleintop, Senior VP, Chief Global Investment Strategist at the powerful Charles Schwab uh, operation. Dave Bonson, fan, uh, Founder, Managing Director, Chief uh, Investment Officer of the Bonson Group. Uh, Dave writes for Forbes and National Review and Barron's and all the rest of it. CNBC contributors, both of them old friends. We've got to get much more to carve up. Among other things, I want to know how much better is the economy getting? I'm Kudlow. Stay with us, please. You're listening to The Larry Kudlow Show. Welcome back, folks. I'm Larry Kudlow, two of the best of the best. We're talking stock markets. Jeff Kleintop, the Senior VP, Chief Global Investment Strategist at Charles Schwab. Uh, Jeff's a frequent CNBC guest. Dave Bonson, um, Director, Chief Investment Officer of the Bonson Group, writes for Forbes, writes for National Review Online and elsewhere, also on CNBC. Um, Dave Bonson, is the American economy getting better? materially better, in your judgment? Um, I think up until this point, Larry, it's been getting modestly better, very slow, incremental, tepid growth. And I think that the policy levers Trump is holding will accelerate that growth. So I'm optimistic in that sense about the impact of tax reform when he gets it done. Um, I'm optimistic about deregulation optimistic about those various levers that we see. But for right now, I still think it's been tepid economic growth and it's in need of an accelerant. Jeff Kleintop, um lots of new optimism in the profits arena. When I say new, you know, I think it started last fall and it's continued into the early winter. Uh, both the top-down guys, Jeff, and the bottom-up guys are really making substantial upward revisions to their profits estimates. Do you buy it? Profits are the mother's milk of stocks, so it's not inconsequential. Do you buy these upward revisions? I do. I, I think that uh, I think they're they're reasonable in all, almost all cases. My, one of my favorite economic indicators is the Purchasing Managers Index. This is a survey of purchasing managers, mostly manufacturing firms. Because it foreshadows profit growth, gives you a glance ahead, usually six to nine months of where profits are headed. That's at 56, which is a very strong level here in the U.S., indicating good profit growth ahead. So that, that, you know, indicator that we've had for 60, 70, 80 years, always a good leading indicator of profits is pointing in the right direction. 
I agree. I think it's a very valid point. Um, retail sales stronger than expected in January. I think that's fair. Some of it's gasoline, but it's fair. You are correct about the ISMs. Index of sentiment, consumer confidence index is really kind of off the charts, which is very interesting to me. And you're you right. Know, that's the, a, an interesting one, Larry. I, I've been doing a lot of traveling across the U.S., mainly in the in the Midwest lately. I've been in Kansas City and, and Cleveland and Milwaukee and so many places. And that change in the regulatory climate is just huge. I can't tell you how many folks I talk to who said, you know, all their additions to staff in recent years have been bureaucratic and administrative and all about red tape. And now they're thinking about, hey, I'm a florist. Maybe I can get that next new truck or, you know, maybe I can expand my business in this direction or look at a a new area. A lot of excitement around that. I've been hearing that again and again. And this is not something you're seeing at the S&P 500 level, but it's something yet. But I'm hearing it everywhere I go that people are really excited about a change in the regulatory regime. Uh, Before I come back to David, Jeff, translate that. Um, Lower regulations. Less red tape, less costly paperwork. Um, where do you go with that? Sectors and so forth. Well, I mean, I think it's. Or is it across the why, board? Yeah, why the small cap stocks have been outperforming, right? right. Now, they've gotten a bit expensive, so you you want to be careful where where you're looking there because they have priced in some of this. But it, it does suggest that the fundamentals justify those uh, those higher valuations. Dave Bonson, there's been some talk about inflation. I mean, there's always talk about inflation. It's usually wrong. But there's been some talk. Consumer prices, 0.6% in January, 2.5% last 12 months. Broader measures, uh, consumer price deflator, about 1.5%. I just ask you, are you worried about inflation? And regarding Mrs. Uh, Yell- Ms. Yellen's testimonies on Tuesday and Wednesday, um, which I confess, I don't know what she was trying to tell me. The doors open in March and it's open in June and, and maybe it's open in my hotel room, but I, I don't know if it's an unlock key or not. Just help me on this inflation, Fed, interest rates. I, I've only been covering this beat about 35, 40 years. I don't know what she's talking about. Well, and maybe that's by design. I mean, I think there's a sort of purposeful ambiguity that uh, that has become a tradition out of the Fed, uh, certainly predating Janet Yellen. And, and, and I would say that the idea of a sort of secular inflation entering the fray now is probably very premature. Mm. The, a cyclical tick up in inflation reflected in both consumer and producer prices seems very likely, and I would be probably more uh, wary of that if, if we do see a big government spending infrastructure bill come down the pike. So um, some tick up from where we were seems likely, but on a global level, the, def- the deflationary pressures from both Japan and Europe seem highly likely to win the day at just forcing that, that force. Down. I'm in your camp. Not everybody is. I mean, they're going to raise their target rates, I guess, I guess, a couple times this year. I hope they go very slowly, gentlemen. Now, if Trump gets his tax cuts through and the economy picks up, the way it should, and real interest rates go up, that gives the Fed much more renting room to follow rates up. But Jeff Kleintop, right now, the 10-year tips break even 2%. You know, the price of gold, pretty much flat, actually, recently, and and, and for the whole last year. uh, Oil looks pretty flat. I don't know. Jeff, I have a hard time with the inflation interest rate story being really a threat. Real quick. Real quick. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think the, the more interesting story is who is going to be running the Fed one year yeah. from now and what will they think about the growth picture. That is key. You just nailed it. Jeff Kleintop, Charles Schwab, David Bonson of the Bonson Group. I'm Larry Kudlow. We're going to take a news break and we're going to talk about the Fed and hard money with distinguished economist Judy Shelton next up.